Sergeant Van Epps. Well, that sounds like uh, the voices of the Big Seven. And I guess they got a song. Copyright date, 1926. It's one of the great all-time American standards. Bye Bye Blackbird. I'll change them all, wrap the chain, I'll change them all. No messy brush, no greasy cream, you wrap the chain in the morning. All you do is press the top, instant lather on the spot. Easy on with fingertips, see how fast your razor zips. Out of all the shaving preparations today, one stands out. It's Palm Olive Rapid Shave. Palm Olive Rapid Shave outshaves any lather or brushless cream. Rapid Shave outshaves them all. Rapid Shave gives you perfect lather every time. Rapid Shave is faster. Spread it with your fingertips. Rapid Shave is smoother. No scrape, no pull, no ouch. Rapid Shave is cleaner, not messy like lather, not greasy like brushless cream. Rapid shave, I'll shave them all. Rapid shave, I'll shave them all. No messy brush, no greasy cream. You rapid shave in the morning. Palm Olive Rapid Shave costs only 79 cents. Nearly three months' supply of instant lather. Get Palm Olive Rapid Shave. It outshaves them all. I think he was all through with this. As you can see, the next step in making a motion picture is costume design. Jack wanted to talk about this, but uh, I guess he's busy making another chart. And uh, you know, when the period is 1927, you can't very well go to your local department store and uh, buy the outfits. Three things are done. A good costume designer is engaged. We got one of the best, Howard Shoup. Second, he makes some sketches. Here are some of them. They're all done in the exact colors and samples of the material are attached. These are uh, presented to the director for his approval. 1927, you know, was um, a period of, uh, and ladies, check your latest Dior fashions, the low waistline, no bust line, and uh, the high hemline. Jack was a stickler on all three. Here are some of the results. Following normal procedure, the dressmaker's dummies are made up with exact measurements of the, each performer. And these are labeled and kept on file at the studio. Take this uh, dressmaker suit from the Spring Styles of 1927, worn by Janet Lee. Right off the pages of Vanity Fair. It's bright red wool. And uh, notice the foxes chasing each other around the neck. And there's a, there's a hat. It's uh, called a cloche. It's bright red, trimmed in matching feathers. And Janet told me it's easy to get on and off. All you uh, 
Neat as a shoehorn. <laughs> and, uh, golly, take a look at this one. Howard Shoe put this little item together for uh, $600. Over 10,000 hand-sewn silver beads. And uh, they do all kinds of things when you got it on. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one that uh, belongs to a nightclub singer. It's ice blue chiffon, light as a whisper. And in the picture, it's worn by Rose Hopkins. Uh, she drinks too much and sings a little. I hope you don't have too much trouble finding her, be hiding behind all of that chiffon. And here's a brand new song she sings, He Needs Me. <laughs> doesn't know it, but he needs me, and so no matter where he goes, though he doesn't care, he knows I'm there, he needs me, I ought to leave him. He needs me I guess It isn't very bright Just to tag along But right Or wrong I'm here I'm here And I Because my one ambition is to wake him and make him discover he needs me. I've got to follow where he leads me. Or else you'll never know. This next section is a tough one and a costly one. Art direction. For this job, you need an art director. We think we have one of the best, a man who can give you a rain-soaked alley in Singapore or a Kansas City hotel room with hot and cold running water, and accurate right down to the smallest detail. Bill Gray, who's responsible for all the interiors you may have seen on Dragnet, decided to join up with our group on this one. Howdy, Peel. Is this a model of Rudy Speakeasy? Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you got an estimate yet on it? Around 27,000. That's dollars. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know the ballroom set? The ballroom set? It'll cost about 57,000. Well, well, I can see you're beginning to get the message. Making a movie costs money. It usually does to do it right. In Field Gray's department, it can't be helped. Every stick, every nail, every banister, every window, they've got to be perfect. This takes manpower and it takes time, lots of time. So you hire more men and you cut the time down but the perfection has still got to be there. Now, it's Field's job to put you in Kansas City in 1927. And if he fails, we can't expect you to buy tickets, can we? I guess there is one way to beat the set costs at that. Any of you know of any old speakeasies around? <laughs> Well, sounds to me like the Happy Eight are champing at the bit again, and if I have any sense of melody, it sounds like one of Remick's big hits from 1926. Breezing along with a breeze.
Get in ham, sweetie? No, thanks, Pop. I just soak and mix the dishes. We use Bell. Mother says Bell makes the dishes shine without washing or wiping. If food sticks, we flick it off. It's terrific. Yeah? And what does it do to Mother's hand? Mother says there's no detergent burn to hands with Bell. And what's detergent burn, you walking information booth? Want to see? I'll put Mother's wash day detergent in this hand and Bell in the other. This hand feels hot. Detergent burn. Mother says wash day detergents contain irritating alkalis and harsh chemicals that cause heat. Cause a detergent burn. And I suppose because this hand feels cool, there's nothing in Bell to cause detergent burn? Absolutely. There's no detergent burn to hands with Bell. It's the greatest. For dishes in our hands. It's marvelous. Well, let's spend some more money, shall we? Next on the list, camera and crew. Now, when you go to your favorite photographer to have your picture taken, he places a group of lights around you for shadows and highlights to make you look better. It's the same with movie film, only it's not one person, sometimes it's five. And they're not stationary. They're moving, and all five have to look right at all times. That means a lot of lights and a lot of electricians. It means a gaffer, the straw boss, who tells them where to put the lights. It means a best boy to assist the gaffer. And it means a grip to assist both of these men. Well, sir, now you've got a crew. You need a camera. We have one in the studio here for you to take a look at. This is a Mitchell, model BNC, adapted for CinemaScope. Now, like a lot of you, I'm a home movie bug. I once looked into one of these. It was just a little out of my reach. Complete with standard lens, it sells for $20,000. That's wholesale, of course. <laughs> now, you need a man to put this machine through its paces. That means a cinematographer. Now, there are a lot of good ones in town, but I can tell you this about one of them. He looks awful good on paper and twice as good on film. It goes something like this. Name, Harold Rawson. Member, American Society of Cinematographers. Photographed a great many movies, among them, Red Badge of Courage, Asphalt Jungle, The Stratton Story, Command Decision, Duel in the Sun, Singing in the Rain, four times nominee and winner of the Academy Award, and a right dandy fellow. Howdy, Hal. Hi, Jack. Tell us about this Mitchell, will you? It takes pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is complicated. What else can it do? It make you worry. <laughs> I'll say. How do you mean that? Did you ever work with CinemaScope before? No, Hal, I can't say as I have. Take a peek through the lens. Well, Hal, I've been there. Let's let, let the folks at home take a look. I'll stand out here while all you people at home look over Hal's shoulder. You are looking through the optical system of a motion picture camera, just as, he, just as we see it when we're lining up a shot. As you can see, Jack is rather tall and thin for his age. Now let's shift over to the finder. Since the optical system must remain closed when the film is running through the camera, we look through this finder. Now Jack looks normal. Yeah, it's too bad you don't have another finder. We do, but it's for girls. <laughs> Why is it, Hal, that everything in the optical system looks all squeezed together and everything in the finder looks normal? Aha. Uh -huh. There you have CinemaScope. Aha. Uh -huh. Explain, please. When you look through the optical system, you're looking at your subject through the lens of the camera. The taking lens. It, yes. In other words, your eye sees it exactly as it looks on the film. Now, you mean that everything on the film will look all squeezed together? Precisely. In other words, the optical system in a motion picture theater works exactly opposite from the one in this camera. When you see the film, Mm -hmm. It looks like it did through this camera. Check? Mm-hmm. You mean through the finder? Yes, sir. I, I see. Pardon, sir. Yeah, well, I'd be a fool to comment on any of this. Any questions? This is only an hour show, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a right handy man to have around the house, isn't he? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, back in 1926, those notes belonged to Walter Donaldson and Abe Lyman. Ella Fitzgerald borrows them for two minutes of After I Say I'm Sorry. <laughs> What can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? What can I do to prove it to you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ever be mean to you. If I didn't care, I wouldn't feel like I do. But right or wrong, I 
don't blame you. Why should I take somebody like you and shame you? I know that I made you cry, and I'm so sorry, dear. What can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? I was all wrong, but right or wrong, I don't blame you. Why should I take somebody like you and shame you? I know that I made you cry, and I'm so sorry, dear. What can I say, dear? After I say I'm sorry. I've been over there watching. I just wanted to do one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, long about now, it's no trick to see that the next item is music selection. That means that Ray Heindorf and his department goes to work. Now, the first thing he does is join forces with a man named Sammy Kahn, and they come up with a theme song for the picture, and they call it, oddly enough, Pete Kelly's Blues. A fellow by the name of Joe McLaughlin gets all the necessary clearances, and eventually, all the music is set. Fourteen songs in all. The music is arranged, and it's pre-recorded for playback on the soundstage. But we're not just making a musical picture here. There's a lot of story that must be told. So, you take that 112-page script that I showed you earlier and you break it down, scene by scene, shot by shot, into a day-by-day -day shooting schedule. Now, a good assistant director knows just how much work can be done in one day. Do you remember how long it took your photographer to take your picture? Well, you can only get so many pictures in a day in a movie camera. So, here it is. A production breakdown, or we call it a strip board. Now this represents one shooting day. There are 40 of these on the board, 40 of them. So the front office takes a look at it and you're handed your final shooting schedule, 31 days to make the movie. Well, <laughs> well, we'll be ready to look at the dailies and cut the movie together right after 65 men and a girl do Somebody Loves Me and that's Peggy Lee. <laughs> When this world began, it was heaven's plan. There should be a girl for every single man. To my great regret, someone has upset heaven's pretty program. For we've never met I'm clutching at straws Just because I
What's new in Colgate Dental Cream that's missing, missing, missing in every other leading toothpaste? It's Garnol to give up to seven times longer protection against tooth decay with just one brushing. Any toothpaste destroys decay and odor-causing bacteria, like this. But in minutes, new bacteria form to attack your teeth, like this. When they do, Colgate's fights their attack for 12 hours or more because Colgate's patented formula contains Gardol. Here's how Gardol works. Just as this invisible shield helped protect me, the Gardol in Colgate forms an invisible protective shield around your teeth that fights tooth decay 12 hours with just one brushing. And Colgate cleans your breath while it guards your teeth. So, what's new in Colgate dental cream that's missing, missing, missing in every other leading toothpaste? It's Gardol to give up to seven times longer protection against tooth decay with just one brushing. Well, we think you just heard one of the great American popular voices. By August 1st, when the movie's released, we hope you'll agree that she's one of our finest actresses, too, Peggy Lee. Well, sir, we're pretty far along with our movie now. We've got the first day's shooting under our belt. We've sent the exposed footage to the lab, and 24 hours later, we get it back. Now, these scenes are called dailies, or rushes. Unfortunately, this is the best we can do for you with Janet Lee tonight. Under doctor's orders, she's having to watch the show at home. At the last minute, she had to cancel out, and we say this with great regret. We miss her, but she sure looks pretty here, doesn't she? Now, this is called a slate. It's how we keep track of the different scenes. This one's marked 32, take 7. This means it's a close-up of Janet Lee. And here we have Bob Leeds and Frank Warner, film editor and assistant film editor. And because they cut film, they're sometimes called cutters. Bob and I have argued for five years. We're still good friends. And you know, this fellow's done a lot in his short 34 years. He's cut 27 feature-length films, 38 films for the United States Army, 141 Dragnet TV films, and he just got married. <laughs> As for Frank Warner over here, He's quite a few features behind, but he's two kids ahead. <laughs> Say, by the way, is it art if I smoke here? Sure, Jack. It's all safety film. It's all safety film? Mm -hmm. Well, it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. This is Chesterfield. <laughs> well, how goes it with you two? Well, we're going to make a cut. You're going to make a cut? There we are. Can the good people at home see this too? Two all right. Now, let's take an average working day. We quit shooting at 6 o'clock. We run the dailies from 6 to 7 at night, and we pick the choice take. Frank Warner keeps a list according to the slate numbers. The next day, the film editor goes to work. That means you, Robert. Now, here we see Eddie O'Brien playing a scene with some strange-looking man. He walks out of the room, and that's the end of this particular shot or take. But it's not the end of the scene. Next. Now, this is a new camera setup, the other side of the door. This is where Eddie O'Brien was going all the time. Now, right here, for our purposes, the take runs out, but the scene must continue. Now, you'll notice that at a particular spot on each piece of film, Bob has made a mark with a grease pencil. That's where he intends to make his cut. Okay, we've got two shots. Can you make it one, Bob? A couple of quick ones, Frank. A couple of quick ones. I'm up on my cutting room code. That means one splice, doesn't it? Well, that works good. Frank, tell me, how much pressure on that thing? About 850 pounds. 850 pounds, all that heavy steel and stuff there. Do me a favor, will you? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Well, that was a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that thing really slams shut, doesn't it? And it's just as sharp as a razor there, too. Tell me, Frank, did you ever... Uh... Not me. I got them off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if Rapid Robert is all set with his movie all, are we ready to look at the cut scene? Let's take a look. Fine. We'll still get along. 
Because you're not like the rest of these bums. You don't want to go through life with cracker crumbs in your desk. Don't worry. We'll hit it off. Now, I'd like you to meet someone. Well, just as smooth as silk. You probably noticed that there are two pieces of film in the movie Ola. This one is the soundtrack. This is the picture. Now, while our Mitchell camera takes the picture, a separate machine records the soundtrack. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Eventually, everything will be on one piece of film, right together. But more about that in a minute. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Jack. See you later, Frank. Frank. Frank Warner. It is Frank Warner, isn't it? Frank Warner, Warner, Warner. You're not in any relation to... Uh... No, not me. I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at our chart over here. It tells us right now that our picture is ready for the musical underscoring or background music. What was all that? The boys were restless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what was it? That's where the Indians break in the fort. Where the Indians break in the fort. Well, there's nothing like that in our picture. We don't have to use it if you don't like it. Whether you have Indians or not, a motion picture needs dramatic underscoring. And for 27 years, this man has taken the Indians into the fort, brought up the cavalry in the nick of time. He's put us inside the hull of a submarine, 30 fathoms down. And he sailed us right into the heart of Tokyo Bay. And he was on hand when Paul Muni as Louis Pasteur made our milk safe to drink. While doing all this as musical director at Warner Brothers, he's worked shoulder to shoulder with some of the best. Steiner, Waxman, Tiomkin, Victor Young. And he's managed to corral himself a couple of Academy Awards right along with it. Now here's how he scored part of Pete Kelly. This setup looks as much like Warner Brothers Stage 9 as we could make it. You'll notice the big screen up there. Now in a moment, they'll project a piece of film on there just as Ray Heindorf sees it when he's ready to score. As the film runs through, you'll see punch marks or large round dots. These are called cue marks, indicating dramatic action that Ray wants to emphasize with his underscoring. Now, background music for motion pictures must be artfully composed. It must fit the dramatic action. It must be written to split second stopwatch timing, and it must do all this and not interfere with the action on the screen. Ready, Ray? Let me have a picture. 24-32, take one. That looks scary enough to me. And that's a small part of it. The entire operation takes about, oh, about two weeks, not counting the actual composing. The music must be written too, you know. Now the picture's ready to be dubbed. Yeah, I knew somebody would ask that question. And here's what it means. Remember when we were cutting the picture a little while ago with Bob and Frank? We showed you how the picture was separate from the soundtrack. Now this music must be added to the soundtrack, plus various sound effects that we don't record when we actually shoot the picture. All of these elements are blended together and become one final single soundtrack. This process is called dubbing. Now that takes another two to three weeks to complete. Well, sir, here we are. The picture's complete, except for trimming down and final editing. But we can't do a good job of this until some of you have looked at it. That means what we call a sneak preview. For 12 months, you've been working on a project and none of the people you've made it for have seen any part of it. Maybe they won't like it when they do. Will they laugh at the jokes? Will the suspense work? All these and a thousand other thoughts run through your mind as you get ready for the first sneak preview. Now, while I pass out the preview cards, here's a king-size treatment of our theme song, featuring the golden horn of Ray Anthony, the warm voice of Ella Fitzgerald, and the full Warner Brothers Orchestra, 
Pete Kelly's Blues. These are preview cards. Now, on these cards, we ask three questions at the sneak preview. One, how would you rate the picture? Excellent, very good, good, fair. Two, which scenes did you like the most? Three, which scenes, if any, did you dislike? And then we have a fourth category for any added comment. I thought you might be interested in hearing a couple of these. 
After the screening, these are passed out to the people just as they leave the theater right after having seen the picture. We had two previews, and let me read you a couple of the cards. Here's one. Under any added comment, I would have played the part of Pete Kelly different than Jack Webb. It's signed Ruth Johnson. <laughs> Under any added comment, well, it seems like a good picture, but then I do not go to movies very often, so I cannot say. <laughs> This is my favorite. Which scenes did you like the most? The ones with the dog. <laughs> I guess she meant me because there isn't another dog in the picture. <laughs> However, 90% of the cards are really helpful. In fact, they tell us what changes to make and we make them. Now, just to give you an idea, when we took the picture out for preview, it ran two hours and four minutes. With the help of your cards, we trimmed it down to an hour and 35 minutes. Now at this stage, the picture's all set. We've had our previews, and we're all ready for final printing. So the Technicolor Lab receives an order for 340 Cinemascope color prints. That's how many it takes to service all the theaters in the United States. 24 of those to be four-stripe magnetic for stereophonic sound. Well, here we are. We're just about at the last step. We've covered the sneak preview, so we're at promotion. Now, this is a big country over 160 million people. Now, no one expects all of them to go see any movie. No one expects to reach all of them, to tell them that a movie has been made. But you try. And in the best American tradition, you've got competition, too. Other movies are made, lots of them. And you hope that yours won't get lost in the shuffle. So you tell them that you've made a movie. And how do you do it? Well, here are some of the ways. Newspaper and magazine ads. And if you're lucky and have a musical picture, there'll be music. And that means record albums. Ray Heindorf joined forces with Matty Matlock and his jazz band to make this Columbia album. Peggy Lee and Ella Fitzgerald are under contract to Decca Records, so they made a couple of albums. Ray Anthony did a single for Capitol. He has quite an arrangement of the theme, doesn't he? Pete Kelly's Blues, you just heard it. And incidentally, Ray's about to take off on a big nationwide tour so you'll be seeing him in person. And the Big Seven and I got together and we did 14 sides for Victor. They play a lot of music and I do a little narration in here. Well, we hope you like our picture. We're gonna come around in person to check up. Tuesday morning, we're gonna climb aboard one of Pat Patterson's United Airlines planes. Now they tell me it's kind of a special airplane. It's geared to take us to some 30 cities, starting with San Antonio, Texas and our good friend Bob O'Donnell. Then it'll be a full swing around the country, including Canada, and ending in San Francisco 37 days later. Well, right now, while I get rested up for the trip, here is Miriam Nelson, choreographer and a very fine dancer, who, with her partner Jack Regas, will do a new dance originated in conjunction with our movie, in costumes worn in the picture. They call this the Kelly Hop.
very casual way with just any soap or cold cream. Now I rub her face with a cotton pad. See how much hidden dirt and makeup are left behind? Look, this woman washed her face the palm olive way. Watch. No hidden dirt. The pad is snowy white. Proof her face is palm olive clean, deep down clean. Yes, the palm olive way removes hidden clinging dirt ordinary cleansing misses. Dirt that robs your complexion of beauty. You can have a cleaner, fresher complexion the very first time you use palm olive. Doctors have proved it. Prove it yourself. Massage your face with gentle palm olive for 60 seconds, rinse and pat dry. Now try the test again. Watch. No hidden dirt. Your face is palm olive clean, deep down clean. Palm olive is so mild it lets you clean cleaner, clean deeper without irritation. Get mild, gentle palm olive soap for a cleaner, fresher complexion today. Well, here we are, almost 60 minutes later, and we're ready to release the movie. This specific coast time, of course. Now, as to the national release date, when all of you there can see it, August 1st, 1955. Well, that's it. Now you know how to make a movie. And one more thing, if you're interested, as of now, we're all available. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching us, and good night. Variety Hour has been selected to be shown to our armed forces overseas. Next Sunday, July 31st, the Colgate Variety Hour will present two very famous families, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, and Anna Maria Alberghetti and her family in their first television appearance. Also, there will be film clips from the new Paramount picture, You're Never Too Young, starring Martin and Lewis. See Jerry Lewis in a hilarious comedy scene, conducting an all-girl chorus. Hear Dean Martin sing his new hit song, I Know Your Mother Loves You. The Colgate Palmolive Company invites you to watch its exciting dramatic show, The Millionaire. See how the surprise gift of a million dollars affects the lives of totally unsuspecting people. Consult your TV listing for time and station. Are you in doubt about your deodorant? Are you in doubt about your deodorant? Without a doubt, you can be the girl without deodorant doubt. Just use Vito every day. Keep no stain dry the Vito way. Yes, Vito is so effective at checking perspiration, it keeps your prettiest clothes beautifully, no stain dry. In fact, Vito has been certified safe for fine fabrics by the American Institute of Laundering. Vito is so gentle. It's safe for normal skin. Creamy, smooth, and soft as a lotion. Vito works just like a vanishing cream. And it checks perspiration. Stops odor 24 hours. So get Colgate's Vito deodorant. Keep no stain dry the Vito way. With Vito cream or Vito spray. Now this is Wendell Niles saying good night for the Colgate Variety Hour, which has been presented by the Colgate Palmolive Company, makers of quality products since 1806.